you talk about the competitive landscape, who is competition for the company and would you expect other new companies to enter the market to compete with this company? As you can see on our presentation, uh, in, uh, the, in a traditional segment such as motorcycle ties and bias automotive ties, we identify two key competitors, including ERC and SRC. But as you can see, CSM has a very strong competitive advantage, as can be seen by a uh, higher number of distribution stores, and uh, its product portfolio is more diverse, and uh, in addition, it has strong brand and high financial resources compared to with the other competitors. In this segment, the market is maturing as with a uh, less attraction for new entrants, and therefore, if we space up, the spread of new entrants is very limited. For radio, for radio segment, the, the uh, cur currently there are four companies that produce radio ties in Vietnam, including CSM, ERC, Kumo, and Brisons. However, Kumo and Brisons are two foreign competitors, mainly focused on personal cars, and therefore we expect that this company will not affect the product launch of CSM because CSM mainly focused on ties for trucks. It's very uh, a, a good strategy of co company because it will lower competition pressure and meet strong demand well. The threat of new entrants is uh, quite limited because uh, the, the, the barrier to entrance is quite high because it will take a long time to put a new production plant in, this, in our country. And uh, the, the, the current competition pr pressure is, uh, is enough to pr pretty further present new entrants. Where do you, you talked about uh, expanding to overseas markets and sort of the export potential. Uh, how does currency play into that, into your estimates for revenues from, from overseas? CSM production requires importing up to 65% of the materials. Uh, however, we, we consider this uh, exchange rate is not a major concern. First, the export sales is uh, large enough to cover the, uh, the import material costs. And uh, we expect this trend even get better in the future uh, as CSM increase their export percentage. Second, uh, CSM is getting stronger cooperation with uh, domestic suppliers so that they can lessen their independence on the foreign suppliers and decrease the import percentage. And finally, the uh, the national foreign reserves has been declining recently, and this allow the Vietnamese government to keep the exchange rate at a stable level. W why would uh, VRG give them a preferential rate over global rubber prices? Can, can you <laughs> Earlier on, you said that the Vietnam Rubber Group would give them preferential rates for rubber, and also they are planting or the new plants are near the the uh, farmers. So, why does the company get preferential rates compared to world market prices? Or as uh, as we said before, uh, Vinacham is the parent company of the CSM, and Vinacham has strong uh, strong high connection with the Vietnam Rubber Group. Uh, for more detail, uh, Vinachap will provide to the Vietnam Rubber Group the uh, fertilizer or the substance chemical, and in return, the Vietnam Rubber Group will provide natural rubber to the Vinachap and other company of the Vinachap. So CSM can take the advantage of buying the lower price than the other competitor from the Vietnam Rubber Group. Moreover, for the imported material, because uh, the Vinachap has a strong political position, so they can affect the uh, the policy, the uh, suggest the policy for the government. For example, in 2012, uh, CS, uh, Vietnam has uh, suggested to uh, reduce Im import import tax for the material from 10% uh, to 5%, and it is uh, imp uh, it is uh, accepted, and it helps uh, a lot for the mater uh, import material of, of the company. Just 
like to know how did you compute for the capex? Um, it seems like the company already has a very high dividend yield, and uh, um, it's in an expansion phase, ex implying huge capex. But at the same time, it's uh, you know deleveraging. So you know the three factors don't seem to be um, possible. So I just like to know how you came out to the numbers. For CapEx for the radio project, uh, the total investment is about 5,000 and uh, 3,500 billion BND. And in 2012 and 2013, uh, uh, about 2,000, as you can see on the screen, 2,000 billion will be dis dispersed. And in these two years, the company uh, uh, pays stock dividend instead of cash because it has to use its cash to uh, pay for the CapEx and the machine. But we, we will, the company plans to pay cash dividends in from 2015 when the project uh, reached economic scale and gain more profit for the company. At the same time, uh, in uh, 2015, the CapEx will be dispersed less and the company will use, will use its earnings to pay cash dividends. The payout ratio can stand at about 60% as in uh, 2011. Can I ask you to go to slide 20? Uh, you have the return on equity in your forecast years going up to 40% by 2020. I'm just curious to know what ROE do you assume in your terminal year in your DCA? So you have forecast ROE going up to 40% in 2020, which is a very uh, good number. but. How do you think about that number in the subsequent years in your model? Do you, I'm assuming you have a DCF for valuation, discounted cash flow. Actually, um, we are in, in our model, uh, the sale growth increased significantly about 18% uh, a year. And together with the gross margin expansion, we uh, consider that the return on equity green increased gradually and uh, reached the 40% in 2020. Yes. Yeah. And what happens after that, after 2020? Uh, after that, the uh, ROE will continue to, to increase. However, uh, in, in the future, the company may uh, uh, issue more uh, the stock to, to, to uh, gain the, the capital for the company. And so it's very hard to say that after the 2012. 